Greetings. I am the most classy of all gentlemen. I am going to devour this Jack Daniels in a can while talking about my favourite records. That is my favourite records within my own possession. Um, yeah. Quite alright, sir. Now let's just get started. This one might not be known to uh, each and everyone who's watching this video. It is a record by the Swiss band uh, Bilderbuch, and it is called a Schick Shock. Now, if you don't know about Bilderbuch, I'm just going to explain it to you real quick. And imagine you take Prince, then imagine you take Falco, and imagine them two having an illegitimate baby. And yes, that is what you would get. Also, a bit of David Bowie's magical fairy dust is in the mix, and that is basically what you get. It's a brilliant record, it got this little shiny effect going on with its lettering. And, um, yeah, on the back side you've got the track list in royal blue with golden lettering, just like the front, just in this case, the font is a lot more sophisticated. On the in... <laughs> on the inside of the envelope, you got the most magnificent of all sights. Yes, a bunch of young lads toppled up on, on, to one another, and uh, yes, that, that is indeed quite nice. Yes, yes. Okay, moving on to a record that some of you, quite a few people might actually know, and yes, Halfway Between the Gutter and the Stars by Fat Boy Slim might not be the most famous, but I kind of grew up with this music, not really as it came out, because Wait, I know what was that one actually released and it was released in 2000. I was like five years old, so I didn't quite listen to Fat Boy Slim just yet. But my brother discovered Fat Boy Slim like, I don't know, around 2003, 4, and because I, as a young lad, listened to most of what my brother tended to listen to, I also listened to this. Uh, Weapon of Choice is obviously the best song of this album, and there's not much else to say about it. It's just the inner sleeve artwork, and yes. My young lads. Um, let's move on to the uh, next uh, little little record, shall we? And we got something that might uh, a few people might recognise, yet it isn't probably what you think it is. It is this Rolling Stones compilation album. It holds quite a few classics from the 60s, and it belongs to my mother, actually. Sort of, kind of. She gave it to me since she no longer has a record player of her own. But it introduced me to some such such diamonds, uh, such as uh, Satisfaction, uh, Lady Jane, Jumper Jack Flash, and of course, my favourite of this album, since I'm a big fan of psychedelic rock, is 2000 Light Years From Home. Next on, we got something that I picked up from a record store, but there isn't actually a real sleeve to it. It's a James Brown promo disc, and uh, really it's just because it's, it's funk. The best of funk. The best of James Brown funk. Moving on to this uh, another little compilation disc. This time it's David Bowie. It's called Golden Years. It's not an album, obviously, but it, it got quite a few songs from his Berlin era and from his early 90, uh, early early 80s works, which I have to admit are the most interesting and most fascinating parts of his whole, you know, work in general. You got things like uh, Fashion on there, Look Back in Anger, Scary Monsters, and inexplicably enough, can't explain, it is cover of the Who song. I don't know why, because it just doesn't fit with all the other classics on there. As wild as the wind, it ashes to ashes, so I don't really know what, what, the, what, what, what they were thinking by putting on a cover of a Who song on a David Bowie compilation album. Yes, speaking of David Bowie, my favourite Bowie album. Diamond Dogs. Now, Diamond Dogs is theatrical. It's it, it's very it's very dramatic, and I am a great fan of the dramatic. For it gives it gives me chills. One could say it provides me with excitement. And this is the in a sleeve artwork, um, and a little quote that is taken right from the beginning of the first song, Future Legend. And uh, yes, I also I'm I'm not too fond of the album cover per se, but the album in and of itself is a brilliant piece of art that I think a lot of people underestimate. Quite a few people like um, Ziggy Stardust a lot more. 
Speaking of underestimated music, here we got David Bowie, uh, The Collection. This is a compilation, once again, however, it's a compilation of his mostly 60s work, not including, interestingly enough, Space Oddity. It does, however, have The Laughing Gnome on it, and who doesn't love David Bowie's masterpiece, The Laughing Gnome? Here we got the uh, inside sleeve, and I just, I just, I'm just a sucker for his 60s, not really schlock, I would just call it. Uh, it's a bit, it's a bit, ah, uh, there's a word for it in the English language, which I am currently not, um, currently not thoroughly aware of to uh, quote it. Uh, yes, but I still like this kind of music. It's, it's, someone once claimed it is a uh, folk. It's basically folk music what he was doing, and yes, I mean, I guess so. I guess I like, I like folk specifically if David Bowie is doing folk. Next one we got another album that you probably don't really know. It's uh, from the German alternative Dadaistic musician Peter Licht. Lope der Realität. It is a live album, and the live performances of quite a few of these songs outshine the live performances of um, his album versions. And it's not much to say about that because I had to, if I were to go into greater detail, I had to explain the whole backstory of this artist, and he's not as well known as I would wish him to be. Moving on, we got something that quite a few of you might recognize once again. Ben Foltz and Nick Hornby worked together on this brilliant achievement in singing and songwriting, and also music in and of itself. However, I was rather not intrigued, but baffled when I looked up the reviews for this little masterpiece, and lo and behold, quite a few people thought it was meh. But I guess it has something to do with the, um, you know, with the music in and of itself, and the kind of quality that most people came to expect from uh, Ben Folds, yet I presume that they weren't expecting something that sounds a bit more lush, sounds a bit more, not lush, uh, a bit more pseudo-mainstream. I'm not accusing any music critics of being uh, hipsters, yet I presume that some of these bastards have a tendency of overestimating certain ideas behind music and composition, the comp all the compositions on this little record are brilliant in my opinion and it's one of the best albums you can ever have in your collection. Also, it's one of the best albums to get into Ben Folds. Just saying, if you want to get into Ben Folds, start with Lonely Avenue, it's one of these really brilliant albums. It's, it's a storytelling and musical achievement in my opinion. Next on a classic, we got the Rocky Horror Picture Show soundtrack. Uh, yeah, it's not much to say about that one. It's just, it's just, it's just funny. It's, it's groovy. It's, it's all the kind of things you you would like to, I like to enjoy. Maybe you don't enjoy that, but I, as as a peculiar person that I am, I have quite a bit of fondness of the movie as well as this soundtrack. Let's do the time warp again, I guess, and uh, grab the next record, which is a soundtrack, a soundtrack that I came across in a record shop in London. Uh, it is the uh, soundtrack to The Prisoner, the 1960s weird mystery uh, spy sort of show that you mostly will probably remember from The Simpsons where they did a short parody of it where a white balloon was chasing March or Homer Simpson, I don't quite remember. However, this is the inside, the inside of the sleeve artwork and, um, well, back of it. And yeah, the soundtrack is brilliant, I especially love the opening theme which is Quite often, it just ends up being stuck in my head. Speaking of soundtracks, the Clockwork Orange soundtrack. In this case, it's the German pressing from Hamburg, but it does the job just well because there's no real difference between that one and the British pressing. And uh, yeah, that's actually all that I need to say about that one. If you haven't listened to it yet, I can only recommend it really highly. It's, it's it's a brilliant soundtrack. It sounds so magnificently dark, so brooding to a certain extent even. Especially all the electronized versions of classical pieces such as the Wilhelm Tell Overture. Whew. Going on from soundtracks to something that's a bit more obscure yet might be known to you, Tangerine Dream. Um, the electrical experimental band from the 70s. I I also want to get a record that is not, didn't originate from my own collection, but rather uh, something that my mother had in her own little, little collection of hers. What she didn't have, and what I 
really proud that I have it, is Barrett. Yeah, Sid Barrett, the uh, first frontman of the Pink Floyd, he made a few solo albums and is, well, it's not for everybody, but I personally liked it. It was the kind of thing that got me into learning to play the guitar because it sounded simple enough that I could replicate it. And as such, I am happy to have this record of his. <sighs> Speaking of Pink Floyd, here we got Pink Floyd The Wall and accompanying all that, we got Oi mate, we got a little little single record in there. I, I actually found that one in the record shop is, you know, the only Pink Floyd single that you can actually afford if you go into a record shop unprepared because all these sixties Pink Floyd records, uh, singles Pink Floyd singles from the sixties, they cost like over a hundred bucks each. And this is the wall, you know, is the edition from I believe two thousand twelve. I got it when I graduated high school and I'm still pretty thankful for having received it. Yes, there's not much else to say about that one, I mean, yeah. It's a brilliant album, theatrical and epic. Not quite as epic and not quite as theatrical, but still as mesmerizing is another Pink Floyd album, Animals. Animals is... Animals is hard to describe at times, it's... It's... I mean, listen to it, listen to it yourself, really, because the lyrics are really deep, dark, and the music is, as always, I don't... it's hard to describe it really. It's a, it's a certain kind of feeling of warmth that I get every time I listen to Pink Floyd, especially the 70s part, 70s music that they put out. Um, but at the same time, I can't help but feel a mix between wanting to go to sleep and just worrying about my future. It's brilliant. Really brilliant. So, um, Pink Floyd, uh, I think I mentioned this band before. I could have sworn at least. This is Medley. Their best album, in my opinion. Oh, I just forgot to show you the inner side of the sleeve of animals, whatever. Um, but I'm going to uh, going to show you the inner sleeve of medley because it it features all the band members. Here we got uh, the, oh Christ, that one is Gilmore, David Gilmore, David Gilmore, and that one is um, Waters, Roger Waters, MC Daddy Issues. And now I'm not sure, now I don't remember, uh, either that's Nick Mason or that's Nick Mason, and that one is Rick Wright, or that one is Rick Wright, I don't, I don't remember, they don't really stick out that much. It's sort of like, uh, forgetting what, uh, how Ringo Starr cut. Well, as I was just elaborating about the fact that Ringo Starr, as well as George Harrison, were to me always an enigma to tell apart on Beatles album covers. Just like Nick Mason and Rick Wright on Pink Floyd photography, since they never really appeared. Wait, actually they appeared on the paper at the gates of the, the gates of dawn. Anyhow, as I was uh, uh, saying, um, the next album, or rather albums, so this is like a little bit of a compilation of its own. Compilation of, uh, or rather like just like two albums for a prize of one. It's called An Ice Pair, as if in either a pair or like a pair. You see, it's a pun. Ha! Ha 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 Anyhow, so what do we have here? Well, we have here the album The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, as well as A Saucer Full of Secret. Uh, secrets. That uh, is the first and the second Pink Floyd cover, uh, 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 Pink Floyd album, respectively. The first one is obviously The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This is the inner sleeve uh, artwork, the back of it, and uh, yeah, that's it. Nothing much to say about that one. Brilliant albums, I love this psychedelic freak out stuff. It really shifts my gears the right way. Anyhow, next time we got an album that is definitely from me mum. Uh, not me own, and not a reason to think that I... It was seriously, it's actually my mum's. She gave it to me once again because she doesn't have a record player anymore. And uh, yeah, it's an Elton John Love Song compilation. It's, it's nice, really, it's nice. It, it's something that I put on every now and then when I just want to chillax a bit. Not in the Pink Floyd chillaxing kind of way, but just sit back and just enjoy the evening, you know. Anyway, now on we go with something a bit more freaky, a bit more brilliant, heavy, by Iron Butterfly. You might remember Iron Butterfly as the band who did the song In the Garden of the Vida, or in the Garden of Eden, as some people might propose it was actually supposed to be called. Well, 
This album is better than the Garden of Eden. Not than the Garden of Eden itself. The concept is a bit hard to compare to an album since it is mostly a concept, as far as we know. However, it, cont it contains a few really great songs, such as uh, Unconscious Power, for example. That one's brilliant. I love Solo. That is a so low. And uh, uh, then we also had. Hold on a second. I find it in a second. Get Out of My Life Woman, which I sometimes can't get out of my head, is a lot better than um, um, In the Garda Vida, the album that is, because In the Garda Vida has mostly In the Garda Vida going for it. But the other songs besides In the Garda Vida are On the Garda Vida, not quite as interesting. Uh, so Heavy is a well balanced album where each and every song shines brightly. Moving on, and uh, taking a sip of my classy Jack Daniels from the can, because I can. <sighs> my man, Kendrick, uh, what was it? Kendrick Duckworth Lamar or Kendrick Lamar Duckworth? Last name Duckworth, and I know inside of myself that if I were to be named, if my family name was Duckworth, I would not put that in my uh, artistic... Uh, in my in my artistic representation of a name. Anyway, that's To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar, his 2015 grand hit. Brilliant album, it's, it's really something mixing jazz elements with hip-hop and uh, making it all freaky and really brilliant. I mean, I also like Damn, I have to admit that, but it's not as grandiose and epic, and as I previously stated, epic and grandiose music is what I'm mostly all about besides uh, psychedelic rock. And also we got like here, uh, what's it called? The, the uh, it's like for the blind people, the stuff where you can technically speaking, if you can read that stuff, you can actually put your finger on it and read it without having to open your eyes. Anyway, Braille, I think, I believe it's called Braille. Anyway, that's the inside sleeve artwork as well as some credits. Interestingly enough, not the lyrics, even though it's enough text to technically speaking, yeah, whatever. Brilliant, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. It's, it's a brilliant album and one of my favourites. I put it on every now and then. Speaking of newer stuff, we got back and back, was back last year with Colours. An album that quite a few people didn't like as much, but I can be, I, I could be persuaded to liking it quite a lot because it's happy, it's joyful, it's upbeat, it's energised, it's just, it's just a nice album, but it's back and back in my opinion is the de textbook definition of cool. Just I have a dictionary and uh, under the word cool I just scratched out everything else, put a picture of Beck in and like with big ass markers wrote in Beck. So it's like cool definition Beck. That is it. That is just it because he's brilliant. Each and every album I've listened to from him from his, his him <laughs> has been brilliant in my opinion, including Colours. Oh, I totally forgot about something. It's not just Colours, but it's Colours in Colour. It's a red vinyl disc. Anyway, moving on. Oh, the album is going to be brilliant. Um, the 80s, a brilliant, a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant decade of music uh, decade, um, is mostly remembered, <laughs> mostly remembered, from the most subtle of all musicians. <sighs> oh my god, everybody loves him for precisely the whole album. Everybody loves this album, not just one song from this album. Yes, it's Rick Astley and his album, Whenever You Need Somebody. You, you, you remember the hit song from Rick Astley, Whenever You Need Somebody. It's definitely the only song that you remember from him. Or how about It Would Take a Strong Man. Also, an, a song from Rick Astley that everybody just joyously remembers because what else would you remember from his, uh, it's like Slipping Away, No More Looking For Love, or the Frank Sinatra-esque, When I Fall In Love, ah. Also there's like some song called Never Gonna Give You Up On This, never heard of it. But it's, it's, it's a nice song, it's a brilliant album. And uh, we got something else from the 80s, we got uh, Ice House, uh, Primitive Man. I love the title track. Immensely, and the rest of the album is once again something that I is I, I like this album for the same reason I love the uh, Alton John Love songs compilation because it's something that you can just put on and relax and 
not give a shit about how weird this whole world is. Moving on. Electric Light Orchestra's Time. Now, I came across this album, which is, by the way, uh, with see-through vinyl. Um, I came across the album because of a certain song, and that one is the uh, second song, Twilight. Because that song was used in a promo for a anime convention during the 80s in one of the most brilliantly animated short movies made by like four people or something like that. I'm going to leave a link in the description to what I'm referring to because I don't quite remember what it was called. However, the song was brilliant and I thought to myself, okay, listen to the whole, listen to the whole album. And so I did and I was just blown away. It's brilliant. I, there are quite a few people who don't like this album and I have no clue as to why. It's brilliant, it combines uh, disco sort of elements with electronica, with strings, and all in all, it, it, in the end, you get one hell of an album, and uh, I only recommend it to each and every one who has the ability to get one of these. Uh, I even have a copy on CD, too, so I don't just have that one on record. Next one, we got another classic, and that one is, uh, well, John Lennon's Imagine. Imagine that, huh? Ha 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 ha! What an album, Mark. Anyway, uh, that's the backside of it, and uh, well, that's not much to say about it. I mean, come on, everybody has heard the title track, and uh, rest of it, uh, the other um, the other songs on it are also equally as interesting and equally as pseudo pretentious. Because, as we all know, John Lennon didn't know shit about being part of the working class, and he was kind of a Asshole at times, but I don't blame him for that, at least not musically speaking. I still enjoy his music thoroughly, and this was one of my favorite albums when I was 16. Yeah, and I mean, I was 16 in like 2012, so... <laughs> it's, it's like, it's like, well, well, quite a few people call it, uh, dad rock, I believe. But I think my father never listened to John Lennon, so it's kind of odd. I just came across it and I was like, to me it was like the perfect kind of music, like, oh yeah, fuck the establishment, especially like this dude knows what he's talking about, not because he's from the middle class and didn't really have to suffer through that much shit, but this dude knows what he's talking about, just like me, who comes from the middle class and doesn't really have to suffer through that much. Still, rebellion, yeah, sitting in bed all day, for peace. What? <laughs> what? Okay, speaking of white dudes, but in this case someone who actually has earned himself some street cred. We got Eminem's Marshall Mathers LP 2. I don't have any other Eminem album on record, but I put this one on way too regularly to not include it in my display of my favorite records. And it is energetic, it's aggressive, it's everything that you can just love about Eminem, in my opinion. Now that's the back side of it. Interestingly enough, I am currently residing in Dresden, and yes, Eminem lived on Dresden Street. Nice little detail. I mean, it's not really a detail. Whatever. Classy Jack Daniels. Okay, so we got the inner sleeve cover art. Oh no, that's him, Mr. Mathis, sitting there all brooding. And then we got um, over here the living bowling ball. Uh, yeah, here. Yeah. And Santa Claus, respectively. Anyhow. Ugh, oh, we're down to two records. Brilliant. Speaking of the Beatles, I mean, I was speaking of the Beatles like two records ago. Magical Mystery... Hmm. What's now I feel there's a conspiracy at hand? For well, each time that I'm talking about the Beatles, I'm seemingly running out of memory on my phone. Whatever. No, but seriously, uh, Beatles. Magical Mystery Tour, as I previously stated. I believe it to be an underrated album, and a yes. It indeed is. It is energetic, so happy, so absolutely cool, and I Am The Walrus has to be one of the weirdly greatest songs I've ever listened to. I would have to lie if I say I precisely could pinpoint as to what it is that makes this song so weirdly interesting to me. Well, um, we also got like things like Your Mother Should Know, which... Um, <laughs> If I remember correctly, John Lennon once told uh, someone else that songs such as these are, and I quote, Paul McCartney's grandmother shit. I, I believe that were his words, but I'm not sure. Also we got Strawberry Fields Forever, which is just, mmm, brilliant. And, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, All You Need Is Love is a classic. Baby, You're a Rich Man is interestingly enough one of these songs where I once again don't really know why I like it that much. It's just, it's an interesting album and hella underrated. Okay, that leaves us with the last one and to that one I don't have that much to say because mostly I got that one from my sister and I'm happy that I got it but I've never heard of this band before. I, you know, received this record as a gift. And uh, that is Half Breed by Keith Hartley Band. Yeah? Who on earth is the Keith Hartley Band? It's a brilliant psychedelic rock album, I give you that. But who on earth is the Keith Hartley Band? Mm. To me it seems as though this band might be among the um, interesting kind of niche genre of Bands that were probably amazingly famous during the 60s when they were stars of psychedelic rock uh, but are now mostly forgotten unless you are part of that fandom, unless you are part of a, you know, you're part of the culture, you know, you're, you're a psychedelic rock fan. Same thing goes for example for Gandalf. No, no not the character Gandalf, the psychedelic 60s band named Gandalf, who had precisely one album and were mismanaged, if I remember correctly, and then faded into obscurity. Anyway, this one is technically speaking to be held this way, because that is where the uh, record can be taken out of. However, the cover looks a lot better if you have it, like, you know, upside down sort of kind of. And also, if you do this, you get the whole, I guess, Indian, the whole Native American, if you were. And yeah, that's the inner sleeve, hold a second, the inner sleeve artwork, and um, it's a brilliant album, really, I like to listen to it every now and then. But seriously though, if you were to ask the, you know, the average person, the average Joe on the street, about who the hell the Keith Hartley band is, I'm pretty sure that you would like get an answer of like maybe 20 out of 100 people saying something like, Oh, how many I've known them? Off, listen to them. Like that in, that in. I don't know. Nineteen twenty, no, nineteen sixty nine. Well, I was like a young lord. That was brilliant. Yeah, my Scottish accent is as fake as it gets. But still, you know what I mean. Nobody has heard of this band nowadays. It's kind of sad actually, because once again, brilliant album. Like all of these albums that I was showing you over the course of the last twenty odd minutes. And I might do a bit more than that further on. I have like a little bit of a collection, for example, of uh, singles. Like, um, you know, I'm, I mean, like the, the kind of records they are like a bit, a bit bigger than a CD. But a bit, you know what? I'm just gonna get one. <laughs> oh, second, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> check that, Niels. <laughs> These little fellas here. I got a like a bit of a collection of these as well, and I could show that one off as well. And uh, yeah, that might be something that I might, perhaps, who knows? Probably, probably not. Probably, who knows? Well, well you know what I'm saying. I might do that in the future. Perhaps. But anyway, if you actually watch the whole video, I am saying hereby. Thank you. I am gracious. I am humbled. Good sir. And uh, now, nah, but really, um, thank you for watching. And uh, come on, Barry. Come on, get in. Get in. Yep. And he's in. Barry man alone. <laughs> nah. But seriously, um, yeah, that's that's all I have to say. Um, thanks for watching. And uh, if you like this, then I guess you could smash my face in with a hammer, bludgeon it. Now, but, I mean, if I were to say you could smash that like button, I would sound like a fucking tool, now would I? Yeah, I would. Definitely. This is why I'm not going to do that, I'm just... Should I drink this, like, in one swoop? Why the fuck not? <sighs> oh boy. Um, yes, quite frankly, that was stupid.
but entertaining to at least a few people. See you around.